All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, played fast football. Today I'm going to do a video on uh, maintaining gap integrity when blitzing or pressuring. All right, make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, uh, which is the headwear company we use for play fast football in the high school that I'm currently at. They have a custom online hat builder that lets you generate and design your own hat. You can pick the hat style, the colors, change the color of the bill, the panels. Uh, you can get custom embroidering on there. You can change the back from snapback to Velcro to fit it. So make sure you check out Dome Hats. Every hat has a story. Let Dome help you tell your hat story. Baker Sporting Goods Company that we use for uh, our players' apparel like spirit packs and, and workout gear. Our uniforms are provided through and distributed through Baker Sporting Goods. My coach's stuff is through Baker Sporting Goods, so make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, it's a digital software tool. I use to diagram plays, webinars, clinics. Anything I do on my Patreon site, uh, it's also a better way to get your playbook and, and the knowledge of your playbook and game plans to your players. They have some built-in quizzes and things that you can do to find out how much your players really know about uh, your system and your game plan and your opponents. So make sure you check out Just Play. It's a more powerful presentation. Game Strat Sideline Replay System we use. Uh, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check out Game Strat. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, we have one. Uh, in our weight room, attaches to one of our squat racks. You work on elbows in, thumbs up, eye discipline where your eyes need to be when striking, what you need to do with your hips coming out of your stance. Change, it has coils in there that are resistance coils. You can change those coils as your kids get stronger. So as they develop throughout their career, you can uh, add tension to the coils to make it harder to lev the pad in. So check out Difference USA, high and tight ball security training aid that we use with our skilled players. Uh, it has sensors and panels that you have to have the proper points of pressure and the ball held in the proper place. You'll hear a beep when you have that, the ball held correctly, which builds muscle memory into your skill players that, or your ball carriers, anybody that's going to have the football. That muscle memory tells them this is where the ball needs to be, this is where my wrist needs to be, my forearm, elbow, rib cage, all the proper points of pressure. Everywhere I need the ball, when I hear that beep, I'm doing it right, so make sure you check out high and tight. So uh, one of the things when you when you – Talk to people about blitzing or you look up any videos or any, any drills or anything on YouTube or other platforms out there on blitzing. It's almost always done against pass sets. It's almost always done against pass plays. It's almost always the coverage on the back end, the rush lanes, uh, you know, what you're trying to do with the rush lanes, how you're trying to win one-on-one -on -one battles. When guys are blitzing, you'll see linebacker drills teaching linebackers how to, how, to, how to blitz and rush the passer. But when we blitz in high school, 85% of the time we're going to see runs. So what we need to make sure is we understand how to blitz and maintain the gap integrity of what we're trying to do up front so that we can fit runs. So the past uh, probably three or four years, we had been a 3-3 stack team. So anytime we brought six-man pressure, it was with three back-end, second-level, or third-level players doing it. And the more second- or third-level players you do, you have blitzing from depth, um, the more convoluted it can become as far as them blitzing on the move and then gaps changing on the move. So the first thing you have to explain, or at least in my opinion, being a head, uh, head high school football coach for 21 years now, the first thing you've got to explain to high school players when you are talking about blitzes or pressures is you call the blitz or the pressure, whether it's five man, six man, the coverage behind it, the tracks that they're taking, but that's where it ends for the defense. The offense still calls the play. So when we call a blitz or a pressure, we have to let the defensive players on our team understand that they can still run the ball. The offense can still run the ball just because you've called a blitz or a pressure. So to call a blitz or a pressure and constantly work against coverages, route structures, route combinations, man stuff, zone pressures or zone drops, when you only talk about those things, you're doing a huge disservice to high school kids because 85% of the time for us, we are going to see runs. So we really need to work on blitzing and maintaining gap, our gap integrity versus run schemes. So what I've got drawn up here is one of our standard six-man pressures. We could do it with zero. We could do it with uh, hot, hot pressure, which is three deep, two under. We could do it with uh, a peel technique where we are, we are sending six, playing man, leaving the free safety in the middle of the field as a post player and peeling off the back. Okay, so we can do that any one of those ways. But when we, when we run this pressure, pressure, which is a crossfire from two of our backers to one side or the other, the first thing when you teach the track, all right, the first thing you're teaching those backers is where they are going to blitz. But what ends up happening at, at, at our level, in my opinion, in football, is those kids, once they get the track route, the track right, they think they are just blitzing an area. 
And what happens is they blitz and they run to that area with no concern of what is going on in front of them. Whether or not they don't see what's going on in front of them, they don't have their eyes there, they have their head down, whatever the case may be, once you get them to understand a track, a lot of the times they just blitz to an area. And what happens, if you look at like the simplest zone theory, all right, if a team is going to block an inside zone this way and they're going to start working all right, the inside zone combinations this way, as these backers start to blitz, that first backer that's blitzing the B-gap, so that Mike linebacker that goes first into the B-gap, if he just blitzes an area, and he, and he knows the area and the track that he's going, and he just blitzes an area, and that guard is able to seal or hook or pin him, he now is technically in the A-gap. Okay, So now you don't have the gap integrity of him being in the B-gap on the track where he belongs. The second blitzer coming down, if he just blitzes that area and doesn't see the center zone up, he gets behind the center, and now you don't have the front side a get player. All right? The nose that's working to that side. The down players, it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, for them because they deal with uh, uh, block rack from the first level movement all the time. So the nose, obviously, when he moves, has to understand he can't get cut off or scooped by that backside guard because he has to maintain his A-gap integrity. The, the rush who's coming, the, I'm sorry, the Rob linebacker for us, who's coming straight down in the B-gap has to understand that when he blitzes just that area, he cannot get cut off by the tackle because now he's not in the B-gap. So we have to work usually the tracks first. So normally, you know, we have to work the tracks first. If they're a crossfire, who's going first? Who's the A-gap player? Who's the B-gap player? Who's the, uh, the you know, quote-unquote the penetrating blitzer and then the second all right, looping or secondary blitzer off the first movement. Okay, so for us, this would be Mike first, Lou second. Uh, you know, we have to have to, have to teach the ends in, in each pressure, the end and the anchor, where they belong, the nose where they belong. So one of the first things we'll do with pressures is we'll teach the track first. So we'll teach the track of the blitz in that pressure, whatever we call it, and we'll teach the track of that from the left side, the track of it from the right side. If we then go to another six-man pressure and the track is different, We'll teach the track first, and on air or on spacers, we'll work timing, cadence, tempo, disguise, snap of the blitz, track where we belong. That's the first thing we'll do. But the next thing we have to do is we then have to work the tracks of that blitz versus some type of run scheme. First thing we'll always start with is some type of simple zone or gap scheme with no pullers, nobody going the other way. We're not worried about reading out or doing anything different. We're worried about fitting that run and making sure that we kind of create that flat wall. All right. So if we are if we are using this as a hot pressure and we are going to bring these safeties down to be the vision and break. All right. Hot players on the outside. They are going to be late fit players. All right. We are trying to teach them that we've got all six gaps on the inside accounted for. So hold your water in the run game. Don't go diving inside too quick in the run game. Okay, hold your water where you are, fit where needed, don't go until you know it's a run and you're actually there to be support to the perimeter, all right, more so than you are support inside because when we run the pressure right on the inside, we're trying to build that flat wall with a player in every gap from A gap to C gap across the board, all right, and most of our six-man pressures are designed that way to cancel out all interior gaps so that if we do it right and we maintain gap integrity, the ball cannot be run inside, it's got to be run somewhere else okay so when when we are when we are doing that and everybody is understanding their gap integrity and understanding their role along with the ends so like in this defense the ends for us would be what we would call box players they're going to try and keep all runs inside of them to the best of their ability and they're going to try and be quarterback players on zone read game all right or or anything else we see sometimes we switch versus speed option sometimes versus speed option we may put them to the pitch and fold the hot player back underneath. We play it, you know, sometimes we play it based on game plan if we're seeing a lot of speed option. But predominantly on inside runs, they're gonna try and keep all those runs inside where we've got all the pressure coming from. We're gonna try and maintain all of our gaps inside, and then we're gonna try and fold those hot players late. Okay, if it was a man pressure, then it would be the job of this free safety to fit off the back, all right, and, and know how to be patient off the track of the back and understand not to go until you fully know and, you know, be, Patient enough, tempo the ball, be on the back hip as long as you possibly can. In the first window that opens, then we'll kind of pull our trigger through that window because there really should be nowhere for the ball to go. All right, so that's one of the first things we have to work on. And then the second thing we have to work on is if we're seeing gap schemes, we may have to work on reading out so that if this team were, 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 were some type of gap scheme down this way, 
all right, and they were pulling a guard to the backside. If we just blitz an area blind on the backside, when the mic goes and blitzes first, the center blocks them back. If the second backer going to that A-gap just blitzes that area kind of blind, sometimes he gets lost in the shuffle with all the traffic of that back block. They're pulling a guy to the front side, and we lose a body to the front side because we blitzed two people away. You're always going to have your tendencies trying to blitz the back, blitz the formation. You're always going to have a way of, of getting the pressure to come from where you want it to come from. But you got to understand there's going to be scenarios where you face things where you're going to get a gap scheme run away from the pressure. Now the center blocks back. If the second backer going just goes to his area blind, all right, what will end up happening is he'll just run into the back block or he'll run into the center. The center will then back block him possibly into the mic depending on the timing of the blitz. So what we've got to do is we've got to work on with the second blitzer, all right, as he blitzes, if he gets a pull, we're going to read out and get him to get over the top now. So if we were to get a back block pull scheme and I was the second blitzer coming through the A-gap and that guard pulled, I would then read out and try and go over the top to add a body onto the front side of the pressure and then we would count on this backside hot player, all right, to be that fold guy on the backside that takes care of it if it ends up going through the back door or if we lose, all right, the integrity of what's happening. But what we don't want is we don't want this blitzer versus a gap scheme. We don't want this to go up in here and versus a back block, this blitzer go up in here and get lost in all the traffic of the back block and the confusion and then have three players on the back side of a gap scheme with them pulling a player to the front side because we're going to lose numbers. All right, so the first thing we've got to talk about is the track. The next thing we have to talk about is how to blitz with your eyes up and see blocking schemes and understand what's going on so that you can fit your gaps appropriately. Then we've got to talk about pulls or gap schemes and possibly reading out a second blitzer. All right, if it's a, an interior pressure, if we were an even front and we were going with you know, uh, the, the crossfire A gap or the double A gap stuff, the second blitzer may have to be somebody that reads out all right, and, and is able to come out of that blitz track and, and get with the puller and get us a body to the front side. So you've got to work on the tracks, then you've got to work on, on the, the gap integrity, maintaining the gap integrity. Then the last thing we'll do is we'll work on the blitzer beating a pass set. So getting a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever way the center turns, we'll work on the blitzer then being able to rush the passer, beat half a man, pick a side, whatever he's doing, don't rush down the middle of the body, don't just straight bull rush down the middle, get a side, win on a side. For us, that's the last thing we would do, whereas at the higher levels, that's probably one of the first things they work on with interior blitzers is how to beat pass rush because a lot of times that's what they're gearing pressures for. For us, we're gearing pressures to generate tackles for loss. We're gearing pressures to confuse blocking schemes. We're, we're trying to let our second level guys play downhill a little bit more aggressively if we're having problems playing all right, off the ball and reading and reacting to blocks. Sometimes our kids play better on the move downhill. So we always try to, uh, for us in our blitz game, we always try and teach gap integrity first, make sure the track is right, make sure they understand on a spacer, the first thing we'll do, all right, we always, with, especially with the interior guys in the blitz, before we ever put an offense up there, we'll put a spacer up, all right, and we'll have that spacer out. You've all seen spacers before, all right, so the spacer will have a G and a T and an E on each side, and a G and T and an E, and it'll have a spot for the center on the spacer. So what we'll do is we'll take the guys on the spacer first, all right, and get them lined up where they belong, and just on the spacer with no offense, we'll run through the pressure, and we'll make sure that on the spacer, everybody understands where they belong in those gaps on air with just the spacer now to make sure we understand the track of the blitz. If the track, for whatever reason, changes, if it goes to you know, a, a different pattern, if it went to possibly trying to move the nose two gaps and then coming with some type of crossfire where it's the mic first, that backer second. Whatever the track is in the pressure, we'll work on the track first on the spacer, almost on air per se, before we ever get into working it versus a look. Then we'll get into working it versus run schemes, all right, and getting the six guys in the blitz, in the pattern to understand where they belong, gap integrity versus run schemes. Usually start with zone or gap schemes first. Make sure they understand, all right, where they belong in, in based on those blocking schemes. Okay, and then we'll talk about pass rush after that, in the, especially the blitzers that, that don't, if they're not pass rush guys every day, we got to teach them how to rush the passer, how to give them a tool set to beat an offensive lineman that sets, but that's always what we'll do last. It's really no different if we were to run anything that was, like when we run our long stick stuff, so like America's pattern, 
or stuff like that. Um, you know, we would, if we started it on air first and we worked that two gap to make sure he gets to the gap he belongs in and then we work these two coming here, that's the first thing we would do on air. And then as soon as we put bodies in and blocking schemes, now this two gap player has to understand what the guard's doing. Guard T across his face, guard away, flatten out, and make sure you're getting down where you belong. The mic now blitzing off the two gap movement. What's the tackle doing? Can I stay inside the block of that tackle in the B gap? If the tackle gets down inside, how tight do I have to be to spill the next thing? The edge blitzer coming up and understanding what he needs to do if he gets a block out towards him, if he gets a down block, if he's a box player. That's the next thing we would do to make sure, all right, if we're not pressuring him, he understands what his reads are to play his B gap first, all right, to cut back or to anything over the top on flow at him. So those are the things we'd work on first. Track first, teaching the track on air on a spacer. Then the next thing we would do is we would work run game, maintaining gap integrity in the blitz. Then we would work on those guys rushing the passer. The back end of it, all right, from a coverage standpoint, especially when we're zone pressuring, we'll always look at run fits first, whether it's 3 under uh, 3D, 4 under 2D, hot vision and break 2 under 3D. We'll work on runs first before we ever get the passes, all right, and then we'll get to a point where we work, all right, pass game stuff because, again, for us, we see 85% run. So... Hopefully this video gives you a good understanding of what we try to do when we're teaching blitzes, six-man or five-man blitzes to our players. Always maintain gap integrity. Always teach them the track first. Know the track. Then we teach them to blitz based on what they see All right, in their track. Don't blitz an area and just run blind. That area is going to change. Linemen are going to move. Gaps are going to move. All right, the game is constantly in flux. It doesn't stand still. So now as you blitz, you've got to figure out what the blocking scheme is. If we have a second guy that's got to read out, then we've got to discuss all those things. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how we try to approach our pressures, all right, from the beginning, the tracks, on air, on a spacer, uh, progress the run game, and then after that, okay? So um, remember, hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video or I do anything live. Make sure you comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, if you like the content or how I present it, or if you don't like it, Leave me a comment in the, uh, in the comment section. I respond to every comment that I can see on my side. Uh, leave me a comment about the scheme, what you like, what you don't like. Leave me a comment about how you do it. Or leave me a comment about a video you want to see in the future. Again, I appreciate everything you guys do for me and play fast football. All right, best of luck to everything you're doing. Stay safe out there. The world is an increasingly crazier place every day. All right, get to work. Keep your head down. Stay in your lane. Help other people. Do everything you can to make the game a better game, make the world a better place, all right? And let's get out of the nonsense that we're living in right now and, and, and make everybody around us better, make ourselves better people. All right, guys, remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I'll see you next time.